RFD TV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. Windermere Farms sits on over 400 picturesque acres in Spring Mills, Pennsylvania, where they've been breeding champions for nearly four decades. That's right, Pam. The Allaback family is proud of their past, and they're looking to an even brighter future. Stay with us. We'll learn more when Gentle Giants returns. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. The Allabach family and Windermere Farms have accumulated impressive championships in the Percheron breed, but it all started with a love of horses and just two drafts. Abraham and Mary Allabach settled in this area nearly a half century ago. The land holds stories of Pennsylvania's rich history, including a visit by Ben Franklin. Although the dairy business was their livelihood, Abraham was drawn to draft horses for work and pleasure. If I had those draft horses, there we could put them on the wagon. Everybody could be together, we'd have a good time. Everybody could take turns driving. It was safe and there would be more togetherness and have a good time. I'm a fifth generation dairy farmer. And so he grew up helping us milk cows. All the time we'd be milking cows, we weren't talking cows, we were talking horses. And so we talked about the qualities and this and everything about it. And so he heard that and then we go and look at horses. And we constantly talked about the qualities and the judging and what we should have. And then having some of our own, you know, he just heard it from early beginnings. And then when we started showing and I did the shoeing, uh, and he'd watch and he just picked it up and now he is where he is and I'm, he's just outdone me. And I think Abraham's gonna outdo us all. Our first team of Perchins came when, when I was just seven years old. We got the horses in uh, two mares in 72. And uh, we decided we were just going to parade, you know, we were just going to have casual. And, you know, that on a farm, that doesn't work. You soon go from casual to breeding, to showing, to producing, and everything just mushrooms. Mom and Dad were great parents about finding good individuals that could share their knowledge and, and the ambitions and, and information and share that with us so that we could go on and, and create what we have today. He saw that in us here at home. He saw that if you didn't have a lot of love and dedication for what you were doing would not grow. It would not turn into the, uh, what he has today. We would drive and oftentimes, Dad and I would both be hitching mares, and we had two wagons, and we would show up and we would drive against each other. And we didn't really look around who else was in the ring. We drove to beat each other. Abe is proud of his namesake and the third generation of this draft horse family. I just know he's going to go places that I've never been. He's just got the natural eye, a feel of it, and uh, it takes those kind of things to, to show and, and have champions. And to, if you want to be on the top, you know, it takes a lot of those kind of things, foresight. I'm sure from being around it and everything, he's picked everything up, but it, there's a lot of natural ability there too. And every single night when I hook horses to exercise, drive horses, he climbs on the wagon with me. And there's nights that he'll, um, talk my ear off, you know, and it might be about school, it might be about the deer that are out in the field that we're seeing or, you know, whatever, but there's other nights he's very quiet and doesn't say a word. But I know that he's hearing the sound of those horses working together and, um, you know, my commands and just feeling how it all is. He's a natural. 
it's in there. It's a God-given gift. And once somebody has that feel, that natural feel, there's nothing you can do to take away from it. Holy cow, you are a gifted little kid, you know. He just takes the lines in his hands, he just feels it, and just, it, the horses just respond to him, and it is great. And so, when Gerald was talking about Mr. Ricketts really wanted him to drive that six at Equifest, and I said, well, all right, but you know, he's gonna have to practice. Like, he can't always just wing it on his natural ability. We're gonna have to get some practice. And so we hooked the six a few times here at home, and he, um, he did a great job, and then that day, you know, we always say to him, now you don't have to do anything. Like, if you do not feel comfortable, you say to us, you know. He's like, no, I wanna do this, I can. And when he took the lines and did his lap, and as he was coming back around, I saw him adjust the lines, and I was kinda like, oh no, you know, what's he doing? But he was bringing, as I saw, he was adjusting his lines to bring his mar the mares over for the out gate, and he did it beautifully. I was just really proud of him. He's, he's fun to be around. He's a good kid. <laughs> just kept practicing about every day, drove the six, and it was, it was really exciting the first time I drove it. You just hold them all the same, and just imagine each line is a horse, and just look at the horse and turn them however they need to be turned. It was fun. It was, I was nervous, though, but it was exciting. When, when he went, was out at the Rose Bowl and they, they were going through and driving and Gerald handed the lines to him. Papa was proud. Oh, Papa was so proud. But Grandma cried the whole time because I was just as proud of me in such a different way. He, he is just, he is just an awesome child. Abraham got that same drive and that same desire to win, just like his mom. It's nice to be a parent of a young man that always makes you proud. He always seems to make the right choice. Stay with us. More from Windermere Farms when Gentle Giants returns. Always different, doing all different stuff driving horses at different spots than they ever been drove, um, bringing horses in the field, into the barn that were in the field that haven't been in the barn for like three years, and just, it's all different every day. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. The Allaback family credits the success of the Windermere Farms program to preparation and teamwork. Melissa has a key role in starting all of the young horses. There's not many people here and there's a lot going on. So with Gerald's dad, what he does with the feeding and just the upkeep of everything around the farm and the field work and then Gerald with his shoeing and um, marketing of the horses. Um, what I, where I kind of fit in is um, the training end of it. I really uh, enjoy it. I like working with each horse as uh, figuring out individual personalities and how I'm going to, you know, get into working with them. She trains all our horses. You know, without her, there's no way in the world we'd be doing what we're doing. She spends a lot of time. She has a lot of patience. Um, when she starts in on a horse, you know, she's gonna put the time in, and when she starts in the morning on a horse, she's gonna spend the day with it if it takes, the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. When they're two-year-olds, I start training them, and each one is different. So I might have bring a horse into the cross ties and look at her and say, Okay, you were weaned, but you've been to shows ever since you were a baby. So you've been loaded on trailers, you've been shot, you've been to the wash rack, you've been and seen the whole world. So when I walk up to her with a collar and the harness, and she's just like, oh, this is the next thing we're going to do. No big deal. Now I might have another one stand there that I say, 
you've not had basically anything done. You were weaned, you know, you've been, you've had your vaccinations, you've been wormed, you've had your feet tri trimmed, but that's basically it each year. So that horse is much different. I come to her with a collar or harness, she's like, hold on, what's this all about? I have to put them in the round pen and I need to gain their trust. And once I do that, a day or two is all it takes, a couple sessions where they're like, oh, okay, you're all right. I, you know, we're gonna, I can work with you. Then I just start, you know, basically the same exact thing that I do with the other horse. You have to have your own personal desire to succeed. And you have to have your own goals and your own things. But then you also need a reason. And that reason has to be for love, admiration, respect for the people around you. Mom does like the training a lot and she gets horses ready and dad shoes and does all that stuff. And then it's just that basically every day. We all have figured out you know, where we fit in and what works when we go to the shows. I make a list before we go on the chalkboard of horses that need shot. And because it was years that we would go to a horse show and I would be the Lone Ranger at the wash rack while Gerald was still nailing shoes on horses. And I was like, this isn't gonna work. I need some help in the wash rack. So now I make sure all the horses are shod before we go to the shows. And uh, that's helped a lot. Then him and I will go to the wash rack together. And then our friends that go along to help, they'll be cleaning stalls or, you know, cleaning harness, whatever needs done in that part. Um, then a couple of us do the braiding of the horses while others um, put throw the harness on before the classes. Chris Cottrell, who's here right now helping us, he came home from New York with us to get us prepared to leave for Ohio on Saturday. And he is great at getting a horse ready for the halter ring, just grooming and having that horse spotless and everything perfect. So. Um, and he enjoys that. You know, a lot of times we feel bad because we say, you know, you don't make it to the ring, like you're stuck back in the aisle, but he's like, that's where I want to be. You know, I want to be back with the horses, grooming them and getting them set just perfect. That's my spot. So everyone's just kind of found their spot and it works a well-oiled wheel, I guess you could say. <laughs> One year at New York State Fair, we were stabled by Gerald and Melissa and we, uh, kind of got together and I saw they needed some help and I wanted to go more to the big road, the bigger shows, Ohio and Indiana and stuff. So I asked them if they wanted some help at the Big E and like Melissa said, she couldn't afford to pay me but I just love doing it. So we went and it's worked out great ever since and I think this will be our eighth or ninth year together. Gerald studies bloodlines and feels a responsibility to match the best stallions and mares. Our breeding philosophy is simple. Um, no breeding operation, just like no human, comes without a great mother. I mean, it's any breeding program. Uh, you hear in the, the dairy industry that the cattle guys or even the beef people, they're pulling embryos from great females. With that being said, we always keep at least one great daughter from every one of those great mares. My responsibility is they say, Gerald, what am I gonna breed my mare to? Do you know my mare or mares? And it's my responsibility to then give them the right stallion to do what they need to do. So with that being said, not only do we have to maintain ones in our families, but they need an outcross to the offspring they've raised from our stallions. Some of these people have been breeding with us for over 30 years. The knowledge he retains, like if he sees a horse, he never forgets. If he sees a registration paper on a horse, that's it. He knows, he knows that horse is breeding. Key to success is we never breed with a stallion that isn't as good or better than his own sire. Our stallions are tried and proven. They drive, they work, they handle, they have a good uh, demeanor, they have a good attitude. So they're proven before they ever get to breed in their hair. Him and his dad love the breeding season, the foaling season. I like it, but I'm more like, tell me when they're two and I can start putting harness on them and drive them. I enjoy that part more. But I, I totally understand now how important the breeding barn is because that's where you go win your horse show. 
we need to share the knowledge we've gained so that other people can get that same knowledge and authority. There's been an exciting combination of Joe Ricketts Jackson Fork Ranch Championship Mare Percherons along with Windermere Farm Stallion Moose. We'll see where East meets West when Gentle Giants returns. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. Joe Ricketts has multiplied his passion for Percherons by exclusively breeding his champion Jackson Fork mares to Windermere's impressive stallion, North American Maid, a 19-hand supreme world champion called Moose. He's the kind of animal that brings you all closer together because he makes you all work hard together and, and just brings a special feeling. And you know, you look through his eye and if you look in that horse's eye, they say a horse's eye is a window to their soul and he truly has one. Some people say the outside of the horse is good for the inside of a man or woman. And Moose is one of those horses that, you know, he gives you energy. He gives you things that another horse doesn't. Joe Ricketts Jackson Fork Ranch Percheron mares have made their presence known in the show ring, earning world championship honors when driven by Teamster Brian Coleman, and they have continued to pick up top show honors now with the partnership with Gerald Allabach's Windermere Farms. Joe Ricketts is an energetic and visionary entrepreneur. He's given us an opportunity because he's acquired an exceptional bunch of athletes. Um, the mares he has, you know, he's had great wheel mares, which are big, long-necked, deep-bodied, great-footed, great-boned mares. Um, he's got some of them. He's got some other mares that are athletic, smaller, very high-trotting, very aggressive, um, super-type mares. And so he's acquired really one of the great groups of mares. And that's an opportunity for us, not only to be involved with him and learn from him, which we are, he's the most youthful man ever. He's so, he challenges us every time we get together and I always walk away feeling very lucky to have talked to him. But he's given us this group of mares, not only to use in a show ring, but then to use in a breeding barn. And that's what he expressed to us here is that his, his ambition from the beginning has to be a breeder. And it's fun when you get together with somebody that shares your passion and your anxiousness to go on and produce extreme individuals, individuals that are better than you could even dream they were gonna be. And that's what I hope to share with him in using our stallions on that group, group of great mares so that together we can produce the next great Percher horse. We've got the mares, they've got the stallions. So we're gonna work this championship to win awards, mix the teams, win awards, put both names on our wagon and uh, show them off that way and uh, try to achieve the same level of uh, ex experience, recognition, awards that we've achieved with our mares with uh, this other um, uh, farm. His lodge at Jackson Fork Ranch is a first-class fishing and vacation retreat in a beautiful valley in the shadow of the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park. Our main manager is Jonathan Harding. I'm truly Mr. Ricketts and Jonathan are both visionaries. And, you know, they came up with a lot of the ideas and things that we are implementing now. And, and so it, it really sheds a whole new light on in our industry. One of the benefits of the ranch is to share all of this with guests when they come, especially in the summertime. And while we have guests year round, it's really the summertime is most important. Well, that conflicts with the show schedule. So if you want to share your Percherons, which Mr. Ricketts does, with other his guests, they're not here. 
And so we made a decision to move to breeding and a very limited show schedule for 2013 so that when people come here, they get two experiences. They get the experiences of, of a set of world-class horses pulling a hitch, but they also get the experience of many foals. We had four fillies there, and the moose filly is exceptional. Big and long-necked and all the characteristics and traits that we expected to see. Uh, she's a black filly, and we're certainly hopeful that she will turn into a show horse for us down the road. We'll be able to uh, have experiences that we wouldn't have if we didn't put these two ranches together. Abraham sums up the goals for the future. Just hope to have the next world champion in a row. Just keep having world champions and world champions. That's the plan. Well, Pam, we want to thank everyone for showing us such a wonderful time here. The tradition and this great family at Windermere Farms was so great to get to know. Going into the third generation of raising quality Percherons, we want to thank Abraham and Mary, Gerald, Melissa, and Hammer, and of course, Joe Ricketts and the entire Jackson Fork team. That's right, along with Chris, he's here helping out the Windermere team for quite some time now. We'll see you right back here next week on, on Gentle, Gentle Giants. Giants.